Hi everyone, this is Territory Idol. This is a game that I have been playing since July. It is now, well, towards the end of December. What is it, the 21st of December, 2019? So I've been playing this for about half a year now, and it's an idle game, as you can probably tell by the name, and I've made a video on this game before, but I really wanted to do a sort of update, and I really wanted to go through some of the mechanics again, plus go through some more of the stuff that's actually cropped up during my time having played this. <clears throat> Sorry, I do have a bit of a, a bit of a sore throat at the moment. Well, a bit of a cold. So, excuse me if I make any strange noises. But anyway, I love this game. I have been playing it, well, I've already talked about how long I've been playing it for. So let's just get into it. A uh, uh, bit of a problem though, is that I am so like far along with it that I suppose some of the... Um, some of the things I'll talk about could be quite hard to demonstrate because I've unlocked so many like bonuses and extra things that modify things. It's going to be quite awkward, I suppose, but I will try. Right, so this is my current continent, as it's called. At the very start of the game, you have four tiles, just like a square of four tiles here. And your aim is to fill them up to gather resources and then use those resources to get gold and then spend those golds to get more tiles and you can also use the hero academies to get heroes that will capture tiles through combat so there's two ways to get more tiles and you have to use both of them because the more that you use one method the more expensive it gets so every time you buy a tile the next tile will cost 10 times as much gold as the previous one and every time you capture a tile through a hero, the next one that you capture through a hero, they'll have to defeat more enemies to take it over. So you have to sort of utilise both of them. Um, so let's talk about the different buildings you can get. At the start of the game, see so you've got your resources up here. At the start of the game, you'll have just some wheat. And so you'll only have access to these buildings here. Wheat field, forest camp, farm and quarry. And you'll only be able to make wheat fields because it costs wheat to make. I don't actually, actually let's uh, actually, no, let's not make a wheat field right now. Uh, hold on. Uh, oh, never mind. I'll just go check something. So you only have this far. A wheat field produces wheat over time. Now, every building that you make, you hire workers for it by spending wheat. And the more workers you have on a tile, the more expensive it'll take for the more expensive it costs to create a new worker and they always cost wheat to get a, to hire a new worker and the longer it takes so as you can see everything's got a time to it so see i mean there it says like 0 0.000059 seconds but that's because of upgrades i've got uh is there anything that no right okay never mind yeah so it'll take longer to longer to hire them and they become more expensive so if you've got wheat fields they will get you wheat over time as you can see you get so much per second and then that just adds up over time so if i made a wheat field they would produce wheat and i'd hire workers using wheat and they'd get me more wheat over time and you'd want to get you'd have to get all four of those tiles with wheat field because you can't afford anything else. Forest camps require wood as well as wheat, and forest camps produce wood. Farms, uh, it says free there, but that's because of an upgrade I've got. Ignore that. Like I said, you know, I've got so many upgrades and stuff now that it's going to be hard to contextualize everything. But a farm costs 10,000 wheat and 10,000 wood, so they are expensive. But uh, what that does is it multiplies the effectiveness of wheat fields. So say if you've got 10 workers on wheat fields total, uh, once you get one farmer, those wheat field workers, instead of producing one wheat per second, they'll produce two wheat per second. It increases your wheat intake per wheat field worker. And then you've got quarry, which requires a lot of wood, 30,000 wood and 100 gold, and that produces stone over time which unlocks a new category of building. But before you can do any of that, your aim is to expand a bit. 
Uh, so when you abdicate, once you've filled out all your tiles that you've got on your continent, you've got the option to abdicate. And that will take all of your intake of wheat, wood and stone, divide it by 10, and that number is how much gold you will get for it. So you start off with a bunch of wheat fields, you know, you hire a bunch of stuff, and then once you abdicate, the first tile costs one gold, and you can buy it, then the next one will cost 10, and so you've got to sort of expand from there. Now, the way that you initially do get wood, as you can see here, uh, you can't actually create it, because in order to create it, you have to spend it, but you don't start with any wood. So the way that you get wood originally is you have to use this little shop here. Now, gold is a permanent stat I, I forgot to mention once you abdicate and you get claim your gold all these tiles are cleared and your resources are reset so in order to get wood you have to actually spend the gold so it's like one gold coin for so much wood and that depends on what your intake is it will it sort of it has a base amount of 50 and then it adds an amount based on what your intake is so say if you've got like a bunch of wheat fields and a bunch of farms buying wheat will be more cost effective per wheat because if you know what I mean like per gold coin and so that's how you create a forest camp and forest camps initially well they have the advantage that originally they have the advantage that they're cheaper uh, wheat wheat wise to higher loggers which produce wood and they also hire faster so it's an easier way to get a high intake that will translate into gold but mostly you want it so that you can eventually get the farms which cost 10,000 wheat and 10,000 wood which as you know multiplies your wheat I'm just gonna have a sip of my drink Once you have gotten enough to get a, a quarry, which costs 100 gold and 30,000 wood, now that is a lot at the start. Because if you think about it, 100 gold, a gold is a permanent resource that sticks with you throughout ab different abdications. So, you know what I'm going to do here, actually? I will. I'm just going to do this. I'll go. Don't. I'll talk about shipyards and rail dockyards and all that eventually. But I'm just going to do this so I can abdicate. Abdicate. Yep. Yeah. Right. So I'm going. Let's let's show you this. Right. Wheat fields. Right. They produce wheat over time. That that's a huge amount. And I start with ten workers because of bonuses. And that's a huge amount because of bonuses. And yeah, you get wheat fields. Right, and uh, once you've got a uh, forest camp, <clears throat> yeah, it says custom there, but again, that's because of bonuses and gold per second. That's because of bonuses. It's very hard to demonstrate everything without going without having all these bonus things uh, get in the way, I suppose. Um, so yeah, once you get a quarry, now quarries in comparison to the previous ones, they produce stone and they produce it very slowly. And what that does is it unlocks a new category. Hold on, I'm just going to. Right, yeah, just to make things easier. Right. Stone produces. No, quarries produce stone and stone unlocks a new category of building. You have stone buildings. And here you have temples, schools, academies, and cathedrals. Uh, at the start, temples are going to be the only ones that are viable to you. Schools you'll get eventually, and then academies soon after that, and cathedrals are going to be one that you're going to get a lot later, because they cost uh, 300,000 gold as well as 15 million stone. Uh, but temples, if you have a look at the temples, from here you produce faith, so you get monks and they produce faith. And that is a new resource, and what faith does is it will unlock for you rituals and pantheons. A ritual is an extra layer of automation. So as you can see, these things are producing resources over time. If you go to a ritual, you can choose these things here and it will spend faith. And for however long the ritual lasts, it will do these things for you. 
So you've got five times stone production, five times wood production, same for wheat. Automatically hire workers. You've got five times workers hiring speed, and you've got one plus monk every 15 seconds during ritual for every temple that you've got. So if I perform that ritual, as you can see, they're automatically hiring, and I've got the ritual going on here. And so that's one way to build up your resources to get a more powerful abdication, but also it adds an extra bonus, an extra multiplier onto your abdication gold once you abdicate based on how many rituals you've done. It's like every ritual that you've done gives you an extra 10%. Another thing you can do with faith is you can get a pantheon. Now a pantheon is like an extra thing that will have an extra effect on your game board and this also resets during abdication as well. A lot of things do ab reset after abdication. So for example you can get this one increases speed of workers on farm field on farmers and work fields you know I'm not going to go through all of these but you can get one of these during per per abdication Let's see the double effect of schools, which I'll get to. Doubles farm effects. Increase in time of rituals and the amount of times you can automate a ritual in one go. Things like that. Um, now, what you can also do is, if you've got a Pantheon active, you can spend 500 gold and it will become your heritage. And a heritage, basically it's like abdicating, apart from you don't get the gold from that you normally would from abdicating. But the pantheon that you've chosen becomes your heritage, which means it's automatically selected. So see here, I've got pantheon of fat chickens here, which doubles the farm effects. Doubles farm's effect, if I can speak properly. And because I've got that as my heritage, that's just automatically active. And I can now select one other um, what's it called? One of the pantheon there. Um, schools. Schools are like farmers, apart from they work also not just for wheat fields, but also for your uh, what do you call them? Lumber camps, forest camps. <clears throat> they work for your forest camps as well as your quarries or anything that produces i think it's quarries I th hold on yeah wheat fields wood camps and quarries so it's the same but it adds to those as well as so that will definitely help you get more uh storm which will help you get more schools and will help you work towards academies and cathedrals now academies Ah, uh, hold on. Ignore this for now. I'll go into all that later. Academies. The first one costs 10 million stone, but you can... Um, once, once you've got the first one, each one, the cost of it, stone-wise, multiplies by a thousand. So the next one will cost 10 billion until you abdicate it. You know, you lose it all. But Academy... Right, create an academy. The Hero Academy. This is um, how you take over tiles through combat. So, of course, your being ability to buy tiles will deteriorate over time. And so you will be able to eventually get heroes here. Right? And you can take over tiles. Now, you can choose a class, and you don't start with all of these classes, you start with just Adventurer. I will go into what all of these do eventually, I've got to remember to do that. But if you choose Adventure, which is the basic, the basic class, oh, I didn't even realise it got 100, plus 100% to experience. But yeah, I'm just, sh just showing this off, right? So you choose a weapon. Uh, and the more that you level up, the more weapons you can get. So they've got basic, like damage and armor so for example that's how much damage they'll do in an attack these will be able to these are like bows 
or ranged weapons where you can't equip a shield with it. So say you've got, for example, this slingshot here, increases your damage and evasion chance uh, by 50%. So 50% evasion chance is, you know, like an enemy will have a half a chance of hitting you and your attack will do 5 damage. So if you choose one of those, you won't be able to choose a shield with it. And some of them cost gold as well, so like that, it costs gold to unlock. And once you've got it, it will stick with you. You'll still be able to use it throughout the rest of the continent. And I'll go over the continents later as well. So let's say I choose this one here. I choose a shield. Uh, you've got like a secondary weapon, so those increase your armor and that increases your evasion chance. So let's just go for that. And helmet, let's go for that. Right, so I'm just going to... Capture a tile here. I'm not going to go all out and try and capture it. Uh, once they kill enemies, you'll get experience. And if you've got enough experience to level up, you can spend wood to level up. So say it costs like 1 million wood, then 4 million, then 9 million, 16 million. It's going through all the square numbers multiplied by a million, basically. Uh, at least for now. And that will unlock new weapons and stuff for you. So when this guy dies... As you can see, he's fighting his way through the enemies there. He'll heal him. Uh, let's get a lot more wood and get loads more levels. Yeah, let's get more. And you can see a whole new range of weapons unlock. And they do get quite complicated. So, doubles, daggers and effects and, and a helmet vision chance. That one, your damage is equal to your health. And some of these, it's like they heal you over time, or they'll increase your strength over time. And all that lot. See there, there's one that costs gold I haven't bought yet, during this continent at least. But I'm going to go for that ball there, and what helmet am I going to choose? Oh, I should have chosen a sword just to show you the other things. But there, plus two weapon damage after each kill. Let's go with that, just for the sake of it. And also what you can do... Another form of sort of like abdication, as it were, is during this, you can become a mentor. And the cost of becoming a mentor will depend on how how effective their experience multiplier is. And it will, based on their level of experience, will add a multiplier to all heroes' experience, a multiplier to all their heroes' experience throughout the rest of the continent. So as you can see, I'm currently on this continent at nearly half a million percent, plus half a million percent. And if I become a mentor, it will be like abdicating. Apart from if I won't get gold, I'll just get that extra thing going on there. Now with evasion chances, as you can see, eventually they'll get fatigue, which means that their evasion chance starts to go down. As you can see, this guy, his evasion chance is at uh, in the high 70s. So you won't be able to get your evasion chance to 100% and then just leave it forever. And then de and guarantee yourself a victory because they will eventually get fatigued after every dodge fatigue goes up after a while and their evasion will start going down. It does get it's very simple in how you just select your equipment and the your hero just goes ahead and does the fighting, but it can get quite complicated with the different types of weapons and all that. And I will get more into that as well later. Now once. Say if this guy takes over this tile, which he's not going to, I'm not going to let him. But once you see their pay, it's going to require 10,200. I mean, it starts at the start of the game, it's like 200 odd. But then, of course, it adds up over time. And so once he's finished this, that t tile will become clear. And this tile, he'll be resting, as it were. So that tile becomes inaccessible. If I go over some more of the stone buildings here, um, there's only the only one I haven't got left is Cathedral, which will. It's basically the farm version of the temples. So if I, uh, what do I need? Yeah, whatever. Right. So if I buy a cathedral here, right, it says pyramid. Ignore that. That's because of upgrade. Ignore this plus five holiness per second. Basically, pyramids, um, yeah, so faith gets so much. If you get more of those, temples, 
produce more faith. And they also unlock your ability to get relics. Now, with relics, the way that relics work, as you can see, my hero is wounded there, so I have to spend 5 million wheat to revive him. The relics, um, you've got two main relics, and you spend faith to get these, and you know, you keep these after, throughout abdications, even if you abdicate, you keep these. Um, and you keep these throughout, like, even when you go to another continent, which I'll get onto later. So, 1 billion faith plus 3 ritual automation. And that one allows you to customise the auto-hiring ritual, which is very nice. I've always, I really like that when I got that. Uh, so, you know, the ritual here, which is, where is it, automate workers hiring? hiring. You can turn on or off which ones are going to receive the benefit from that. Now, if you have a heritage already, you know, the pantheon that you've chosen to be a heritage, and you then choose another one. So let's say I choose oof, I Legend of the Forest just for now, right? Um, once you've done that, so you can choose one pantheon as well as one heritage. I mean, I can choose two, but I'll go through that later. That gives you the opportunity to worship a religion. And also, oh, once you get a religion, it will unlock. Um, hold on, let's just. I'm just doing this just to show you. I have so m I am so far along in this continent and all that that. Oh, that wasn't very good, was it? All right. Um. Yeah, once you get to a million faith, you can get a religion. Oh, I should tell you what. Let's just. Right, let's turn auto hiring off for everything. I'm just trying to rush through this, you know. I should have bought I should have bought tons of wheat. <laughs> Cuz I'm having to waste waste your time. Right, that's going to get to a million in a moment. Once you get to a million faith, you can choose a religion and worship a god now there's four of these gods you unlock the wise frog eventually and i'll get into that you can choose the chicken god the god of stone the goddess of nature and oni and basically the way it works is that whenever you choose a god they have their own abilities they have their own method of producing holiness as it were and you spend that holiness on leveling up their own abilities so if you see here, like each each god has things that they like and things that they don't. So, like this one gives you holiness for wheat fields and farms, and they multiply it by five during the wheat ritual. This that's per second, by the way. Yeah. Um, stone god. Stone god really likes things made out of stone, but they don't like schools and they don't like farms. So that'll actually slow it down. Goddess of nature really like temples and forest camps but they hate combat so you'll lose a thousand holiness if you kill something with a hero and oni is all about combat gets one holiness for every kill that you get and minus 10 for whenever you heal a hero so they're all about combat and all that and then this one is schools and academies now the chicken, let's go through, uh, I'm, I'm just going to briefly explain each of their abilities. The chicken god, uh, when you get that one, it has the ability to speed up. I'm not going to go into exactly the calculations and all that, but it has the ability to increase, decrease the cost of your wheat fields. It can also help increase your farm, not your, your, um, your hero's health percentage. The stone god, I don't really i only use the chicken god at the very start of the game stone god i don't use at all these days and basically this one it gives you an extra multiplier like a well not a multiplier it allows things to it gives the effect of like 
99 schools or so when you do a when you do um, a, the stored ritual plus it also you know um, you can stack that you can level up so that it multiplies and it also gives your warriors your heroes extra defense for their shield when they uh, when they are fighting um, and you can also it's also got the ability to reset the costs of those things uh, the goddess of nature is one that I use a lot she increases your um, she can reset the cost of your wheat your far, uh, forest camps and she can also what else does she do yes yeah, she also makes your rituals more powerful as well and also increase the power of forest camps yeah increase the power of forest camps and reset their costs and Oni, which is one of my favourites to use as well, at least for combat, can give you extra bonuses for your your hero, such as healing it when it attacks or when it kills an enemy. It can make them instantly revive, transferring its health, it, its strength onto its health. And its other one is just basically more strength. The wise frog is weird. I'll get into that later. It's a I've got, to remember, I've got to remember to get into it though when I go into great people. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the final two categories of buildings is you've got the heroic buildings and that is whenever you get a hero to at least get some kills, you unlock the ability to get these hero heroic buildings and these are very expensive. So you've got the training hall, which costs a ton of wood and a ton of stone. And you know what? I'm going to demonstrate to you. Training hall. Oh, never mind. I need a lot more than that. Uh, I'll tell you what. Maybe this will help. No, never mind. I'll just, I'll just explain. A training hall, you can spend... You can spend your resources to improve the stats of you know, the heroes that you have out. Like... It costs stone to increase its armor, and I think it's like wheat to increase its health or its strength or something, and forest and wood to increase its strength. Uh, but the thing is, is that they're super expensive, and it's not worth it for me. It never ha really has been. I mean, it was a little bit earlier on. You got hotels, which grant them hero um, auto attack points. An auto attack point is if you turn the auto on, which I have just then then they will spend their AAP, their auto attack points, to be able to automatically heal them and get them to fight again with whatever equipment they were given last time. So see, this one's got 29 attack points. So when he dies, if I've got auto one, he'll instantly revive, he'll lose, lose an, an auto attack point and then continue fighting. And there's also Forge. And now you can't unlock Forge on the first continent. Yeah, it's just there. Great people will be opened after you sail away from the first continent. And that will allow you to upgrade weapons. So say, uh, when this dies, I'll be able to show you what weapons I've upgraded. And those upgraded weapons maintain throughout the course of a continent. Jeez, so much stuff. I mean, how long have I been going for? Still got a long way to go. Yeah, so that allows you to improve the weapon of a hero. And when you eventually get to 20 tiles in a continent, so once you've unlocked 20 tiles, you will unlock the sea line. You'll see the, you'll see the sea. And any tile that you get that is adjacent to the sea line will give the option to build, if you go to build marine here, shipyards, which cost wood. And because they actually produce ships rather than humans, it costs wood to continuously get more and more, unlike everything else. Um, and if you get a shipyard, it will give you ships 
which give you wheat over time, wood over time, stone over time, and gold over time. And that is quite a unique thing, the whole thing about getting gold over time. Now, um, so that is all of the buildings that you can get. I do need to go over relics because once you've got a religion in place, so let's choose, let's choose the goddess of nature, for example. Let's go over this a bit. Right. So there's my holiness, which, as you can see, I'm getting from forest camps and temples. I'm actually getting a lot more than that because of other bonuses, which I'll go through later. But as you can see, I can use this holiness to buy abilities. So forest magic increases how much wood and faith I get. That will increase the power of rituals and that will reset the cost of loggers. So there it costs 333,000. If I get new life, it costs one again. Right. Uh, but once you've done that, you also get the ability to unlock relics. And a relic originally costs, I think it's like t a billion or 10 billion faith. And once you get that, it will grant you extra bonuses that carry over to you throughout the different abdications. I've gone over the main two, but there's also these other ones here that correspond to each of the gods. So this one, for example, on a base level, it has 500, plus 500 wood at the start of the game, plus one wood from loggers. And this one gives you more wheat at the start of the game, plus more wheat. And this one is, well, kind of different actually, because it gives you uh, more stone, but it also gives you extra faith when you build certain things. And this one unlocks the different hero classes. So you remember before how I was saying how you get different hero classes. I can't choose it with this one now because I've already chosen a hero. But you unlock two different classes. You unlock a Ronin and a Berserker. Now, the way that Ronins work is after every kill, you will get 30 auto attack points. So they're very good for idle. And the Berserker has... Oh, yeah, the Ronin also can use any item for free gold-wise. You don't have to spend gold on any weapons. And the Berserker has the ability to have double effect with axes. And if it has enough damage, enough attack strength, it can kill two enemies in one go. Which also helps speed up. You can also un eventually unlock Rogue, which just has extra evasion which i'm not too bothered about and you can unlock paladin which is a bit more complicated but you have to do that through Ugh, something else i'll go into later uh so yes once you've gotten 20 tiles you will then get uh, this this um, outlet to the sea now the thing is is that once you've done that once you've got enough tiles and you've got enough ships, you can sail away to a new continent. Now, why would you want to sail away to a new continent? Well, a, content, a new continent will reset the game. It will reset it to four tiles and everything will go back to exactly how it was. But you get two bonuses from it. Or you'll also you'll keep all your relics as well. There's two bonuses that you will get first of all you'll get fame uh, every tile you take will translate into fame so say i've got 34 tiles here if i was to sail away which i can't but if i was to sail away here i would get an extra 34 fame now every point of fame gives you plus three percent to your abdication gold so now i'm at 1338 percent fame uh, percent bonus from fame that means that when i abdicate i will get that much extra in gold so progressing through the second continent will be much faster than the first continent but also you'll maintain your empire points and after you get the first 15 tiles and it will then unlock empire points and every 15 tiles you get will give you an empire point and you can spend those empire points on abilities and these will maintain with you throughout the course of getting different continents and this is a lot of the bonuses i was talking about earlier um 
and I'll go through my specific ones there in a not just yet but soon uh, and also you get great people here now great people these also stick with you throughout continents and you're required to have so much fame now I've bought all of them so for example the first one is the great blacksmith which will allow you to build a forge and a forge you use um I don't remember if I've gone through this but yeah with a forge you will um spend wood a lot of wood or amber which I've not gone through yet <laughs> you'll spell you'll spend wood or amber uh to create fuel and then the fuel is used to upgrade weapons so if I go to this guy here as you can see uh, I've upgraded this axe a lot. This one is like level 7. So that plus 12% to weapon damage after each kill. That's only because I've upgraded it a ton. Um, yeah, and the more... The more wood that you burn on per abdication, the more it costs... The more wood it takes to burn to require the same amount of fuel. Um... And these bonuses do persist throughout ab ab different applications. The more wood that you burn, um, the more it costs until you abdicate and then it'll cost cheap again. It'll be cheaper again. By cheap I mean like a few billion wood. And that sticks with you. Um, and yeah, but they're also very expensive. I mean, look, it costs... 50 million gold and 50 billion stone, which, I mean, depends on the situation that you're in, but you won't be able to get that for a while. The second great person you'll get, which I think you need 100 fame for, is the Great General, and that unlocks the Paladin class. I'll tell you what, I'm going to become a mentor now, because I don't... I'm going to... Hold on. I'll go through this quickly. Uh, the Paladin class has the has the ability to spend holiness. I'm just quickly building one here. I won't be able to do this so quickly at the beginning of the game. I don't really like the Paladin class. Uh, oh, you have to... Oh, never mind. You have to uh, upgrade a Ronin to level 20. Never mind. Um, but yeah, a Paladin can spend Holiness to get bonuses such as bonuses to speed, bonuses to um, strength, auto attack points, you know, things like that. Um, and the final one that you get is the Great Prophet, which unlocks the Wise God, the, the Frog the wise frog god, which I'll go into in a moment. Another thing that's really good about these shipyards is that whenever you have gold production, so see there I'm getting gold per second, that unlocks international trade. And international trade is because, you know how I was saying before that when you, like the more on a continent that you spend on tiles or you know stuff like that, it gets more and more expensive. Well, international trade gives you the ability to buy resources in bulk, so like so much for a million gold, so much wood, wheat and stone. And it also gives you access to these experts. And you can level up these experts by spending gold and they will keep having the effect of things. So surveyors there will, every time you level up or, well, or you get a surveyor, you'll have the cost of buying the next tile. Headhunters will have the hiring speed. So as you can see there, it has like... Uh, a two million times speed, which is why now on this continent, if I click something, it takes like zero seconds until eventually it'll say like 0 0.000001 or something. Because I have so, so many of those. Cultists, they have the cost of religious perks, but not for... I've not even gone into servants, have I? Oh. And nurses will... Uh, have the hiring speed, oh, well not speed, that's a bit of a typo I suppose, it's double the hiring speed, it's having the amount of time for healing a hero, which is why it takes a very quick amount of time to do that. 
But, uh... Yeah, once you get a religion, I should probably... Oh, there's just so much to go through. Once you get a religion, you can unlock... There are two things you could... The two other things you can do with a religion. You can... Oh, I'm going back and forth. It's, <laughs> it's so hard to explain everything. What am I doing? Let's just... Let's just... Come on, let's just stack up on it. Right, there I am. Right, religion. Uh, I need to choose a pantheon first. Religion. Yeah, let's just choose the stone god. Right. So, as well as this, you've also got servants you can summon, which cost faith. And these will add some new abilities that you can spend your holiness on. Um. So... As you can see there, the guru costs a billion faith, and it will increase the amount of time that rituals last, as well as the amount of rituals you can do in one go. I've used that a few times. Missioner, I've used this plenty. I used to use this quite a lot before I got a particular empire bonus uh, for gaining holiness, but I used to use this one quite a bit when using the Oni god, because that gains holiness very slowly. But this increases how much faith you get, and it gives you extra holiness per second. And then you've got a chaplain that I've never used. It costs 15 billion faith. And it gives you auto attack points and doubles your hero's health. I've never, I've never used that. But also you've got divine trials. And I can't exactly show you just now. In fact, I can. Because I can show you the, the, um, hold on. Right, let's just get out, this out of the way. Yeah, become a mentor. Yeah, whatever. Right. Um, now, I've completed all the divine trials for every one of my gods, apart from the frog god. And this one, you have to you have to have at least 300 fame to unlock it. And the wise frog is an interesting god because it is... It is very idle. But I will... Hold on. I'm going to... Just get a bunch of stuff here. Come on. Stone. Just wanting to get to a million faith again. Right. Well, the wise frog, whilst that's building up my faith, the wise frog has the ability to... It, it's a very strange one because it's incredibly idle. It's very hard to utilise, but if, say, you're going away on holiday for a while or you know you're not going to be able to get back to the game for a long time, it can be very useful because it will generate workers over time. Now, the great thing about that is that because workers increase in cost over time, it being able to generate them, it does so for free. It just takes time. Almost there. Come on. Right. Religion. Let's use the wise frog. Right. So, uh, and this one takes ages to unlock. You have to go through several continents to get it. But... If I go to Quest for Mysteries, and I select that, right, it will, among other things, it will place a mystery on a random tile, right? Now, that one there doesn't do anything because there's nothing on it. But if I put a shipyard there, right, this will create a new ship every 20 minutes for free. So, because the, the costs increase over time, if you're going away for a week or something, this is going to create a lot of, a lot of ship, ships for you. That's going to contribute a lot. The only thing is, is that with that, is that you can't choose where it's going to go. So say if I choose another one, oh, it's put one right next to it. Well, I can get another shipyard just there. 
so yeah, um, that's the effect of that. But also, and I can show you this as well, is that when you have a a god active, you can go on a divine trial. Now, to get the divine trials, you have to um, you have to have so many like relics, and you've got certain requirements. But a divine trial will take you to a separate board, separate from your main board, and your main board will still be active. So if I go to divine trial, and I go there, uh, the second trial. It'll take you to a separate board with its own rules. So say for this one, it will say, all right, require frog level three, which I've got. I haven't even gone into le leveling up relics yet. <laughs> Reward mysteries are five minutes faster. So that means that once I complete this, my my mysteries will produce something once every 15 minutes rather than every 20 minutes. And the rules are the ridging of fro frog is always active. 9-10% to the cost of religious perks, 10 times quest for knowledge power, and there's always a mystery on the first tile, the game begins at one tile and 100 fame, no achievements or empire points or permanent amber upgrades, amber's not given for opening tiles, blah blah blah, and once you start it, boom, you're in this new board, this is you on your spiritual journey, so to speak. So... All of my Empire Point effect, all of my relics, all of my bonuses do not apply here. It is its own thing. So, say if I create a wheat field here. This is like right at the start of the game. Right, I can abdicate. Yep, and it's like playing... Um, it's sort of like playing the game again, but with new rules. But whilst this is all going on, you you can't you can't access your main board whilst you're doing this so your main board it's good to have a good setup uh with stuff going on during that time maybe you've got something that's going to take a long time to fight some enemies or you've got some things that are going to put up lots of resources that you're after and these can last you a couple days but uh yeah so it's its own set with its own rules. And once you've completed that, you'll go back to your main board with whatever bonuses you have unlocked. But I'm going to exit. I'm going to abort. Uh, right. So once you've progressed to go to another continent, that will increase your level cap for your relics. And every relic cap will cost an extra... 10 billion to level up and it will um, add an extra 10% to its thing. So say for example I have this to level 5. So um, yeah every time you sail away it increases the level cap of it as you can see I've got this level 5 so level 5 means I get plus 50% to total wood production and this one's level 8, which is plus 80% total wheat production. Um, the god, the Oni one, will give you extra auto attack points with every level up. So two, it's level 2, so every time a hero levels up, it gets two auto attack points. And um, this one gives you minimum ritual bonus, which is quite confusing. It basically means that... The bonus from abdicating that you get from performing rituals, as long as you performed one, it will give you at least so much percent. And then you don't, once you get more, it will then start to build up again. But you only need one to get to a minimum amount. It is quite strange and complicated, I suppose. Uh, so, yeah, I think I've discussed most of like what's going on here i think i've discussed um the main game has gone on i don't think the only thing i've got left to think about that i haven't mentioned which is something you get like at the start of the game is every time you buy a tile with gold you will get five amber and this is sort of like your this is stuff that they use for the microtransactions and all that and you can buy permanent upgrades with your with your amber so you can also do like time lapses so you like skip ahead in time um, and you've got permanent upgrades where you'll get extra bonus like intake. You've got 
uh, yeah, this one I've got is where you start the game. You start an abdication. Once you're abdicated, you start with a thousand faith. I'm saving up for this one where every wheat fields, forest camps, and quarry start with 99 workers as soon as they've been bought. So that's the one that I'm saving up for at the moment. Now, as for empire points, I want to go through what I've been doing um, because, as you can see, these it's it, it's not really like a skill tree, so to speak, because it doesn't branch outwards. It sort of is just several different lines, and every point along the line costs more empire points to get. Now, I currently have four empire points, so I can currently get something that I one of these things that I'm after. Uh, so. These go up in cost as you go along one, so it goes from 1 point to 2 to 3 to 4, and then the last one costs 10. Now, originally, you don't start with the English one unlocked. It starts locked, and you need to spend 20 Empire points total to unlock it. And there's still two more here that I haven't unlocked yet. But the abilities that I've gotten, let's go through this, and let's see how I've uh, done this. So the first one I got was this first one. Uh, Plus five to ritual automation, minus fifty percent to ritual cost. So I can do more. I can do an extra five rituals in one go, and also the rituals cost half as much. That was the first one I ever got. Uh, from there, where did I go after there? It might have been this one. It doubles the gold. Yeah, it uh, doubles the gold that you get produced from things that produce gold and it also halves the tiles the cost of tiles when you when you buy them uh, yeah I got this one pretty early as well and this is really neat it decreases the speed of which tiles increased in in cost and it also decreases the speed in which the amount of uh, enemies that heroes need to defeat goes up by so Whereas, like, every time it would multiply by 10, the amount of gold, with this ability, it only multiplies by 9. So that's handy. Uh, yeah, buildings start with 10 workers, heroes start with 10 AAP. I wasn't too bothered about getting that one straight away, but when I got it, it proved to be very useful. Because when you think about things like, like cathedrals and temples and schools even, those things can get expensive. If you... If you buy something then you will get an instant boost there also with farms at the very start of a continent as well it really does give it that extra boost and it really does push you just that little bit further i wasn't too bothered about this one that you can get two pantheons at once i did get that eventually because i did want to get like the later ones uh what else did i get early um so I think I got this where, yeah, I think this is the next one I got, where forest camps become custom offices, which is interesting because what they do is for every 20 loggers, you produce one gold. And that is only active once you hit 20 tiles on a continent. But that also not only produces gold, it also gives you access to the international trade, which is very nice. And yeah, then I see, th then I got this one as well, where cathedrals become a pyramid and pyramids give extra 50% plus gold to abdications like per pyramid so you know the more pyramids that you have that contributes quite highly to your abdication gold but I also really wanted this one provides three holiness per second each from each pyramid that's not from each bishop on a pyramid it's from each pyramid but five holiness per second if you're using Orni who usually you only get like one one per like kill changing that into like 15 per second or something or 20 per second is a huge bonus uh i really like this as well upgrade schools to theaters basically the school is the same well the theater is the same apart from the actors that you get cost 10 times less so it's much easier to get that multiplier for those and this one, the theatres also add plus one faith from monks. So it increases your increase of faith quite a bit. Um, yeah, I really like this one, where custom officers produce gold at 10 tiles as opposed to getting to 20 tiles. And... Uh, 
And what else? Yeah, I think it was about this time I unlocked the English one. So, this first ability I didn't really care about. Plus 30 damage, plus 30 evasion. Oh, it, you unlock a bow at the start of the game. Because I use berserkers, uh, I tend not to use bows because they don't get evasion. But at the start of, either side of a continent, if you, you want to set up a Ronin, so that they can auto-attack just to kill a few hundred enemies or so for the first two or three tiles, that bow is pretty useful. But I mostly wanted these next two abilities, where the Royal Dockyard... Access to ship the yard, but ships cost 20% less and an increased amount of gold from ships. That was the last one that I got. Uh, as for the American line, uh, the ones I haven't done, as you can see, there's the American line here, which I'm not too bothered about because my my academies are really, you know, I'm not having a problem with my academies at all. So this one, I mean, it only costs two, so I might get that one soon, increases. Uh, the percentage of health, shield, and damage with every level up, but I've not needed that. And then you've got this one, which t turns your heroes into random superheroes. I don't know how that works with copyright, but okay. Uh, see, that one is nice. Minus 20% to experts, all workers, and the hearing hi and the he hearing and hi hiring and healing cost for the for the heroes. That's pretty nice as well. And this one is really good. This, it decreases the rate at which academies increase in cost. So instead of going from 10 million to 100 billion to a quadrillion, it'll go from 10 million to a billion to 100 billion. It, it multiplies it by 100 rather than multiply it by 1,000. That's really good. But it costs 10, 10 empire points. And I've got to do all this first, so I'm not on my way to getting that. The Japanese line, I'm not bothered with at all. This first ability takes twice as long for heroes to tire out. I'm not bothered. I don't... The only time I use anything with any sort of evasion is during the start when I've got that English bow, so I'm not bothered about that at all. Then upgrades the training hall into a dojo, which is ten times faster, and the cost of training goes up slower, which, again, training halls I've just not used, so I'm not bothered about them. Training effects are doubled, still, I'm not bothered. That's alright. Minus 25% to hero level up cost, but still, I'm not going through all that, and it's four empire points for that. But this one looks really nice. Like you, once you've maxed out a, once a hero's captured a tile, they don't have to rest; they can go and capture another one. That can be really neat. But still, I've got to go through the, all this to get there. Um, yeah, this one. Uh, turning farms into aqueducts. I forgot to go into this, I think. Yeah, turning farms into aqueducts. I think that was the last ability that I got, or one of the last abilities that I got. And aqueducts are basically just farms, apart from the first one you get is free. Which is why, if you recall, I said, oh yes, it's free, but ignore that. Yeah. Right. Um, so the next one gives you faith as well as wheat stone and all that after each... Um, each thing, each aqueduct's been built, but I'm not too bothered about that. 10 AAP after every level up. Quite do not require gold, not too bothered about that. But that one, again, it looks really nice, but I'm going to have to slowly work towards that. Uh, they start with 100 workers, or at least an extra 100 workers. Um, yeah, a good thing about the aqueducts as well is that... It means that when you start a new continent, you can get a lot of gold on your first abdication because usually you just have to build four wheat fields and go from there. But if you build three wheat fields and an aqueduct, because you can afford the first one, you can get a bunch of gold and you'll get straight to like 10 tiles straight away, which means for me at least, I'll be able to build a custom and get gold production almost instantly when I get to a new continent. Um... Yeah, uh, Russian, this is one of the ones that I'm after. Um, yeah, of, of these ones that I've built up here, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, the English one here, uh, when buying a coastal tile, you get 80% of the gold back from it. Uh, that's good, but the um, only thing is, is that there's like a glitch you can exploit, so it's not where you don't spend gold anyway, so I suppose it's not much of a big deal to me. And that one gives extra health when you're fighting, when a hero is fighting for a coastal tile, which I'm not bothered about. I'm 
I'm not bothered about the strength of my heroes. So anything hero based here, I'm not too bothered about just, just now. Out of these ones here, there is... Right. I have four Empire Points. Uh, this is one I'm definitely not after. Minus 50% to Pantheon cost. And plus 5% faith. Plus 5 faith from monks. That plus 5 faith from monks is pretty good. But I'm still not too after it. And that one you can get two heritages instead of one. Uh, did I mention? Yeah. yeah, That one you can get two Pantheons. And this one you can get two heritages. Again, it's alright. But I'm not too much after that. So I'm going to leave that for a while. But I am after... Where is it? these two here so plus two to ritual power plus two to rituals automation plus two to rituals power so that means anything a ritual that would give you say times five wheat production would instead give you times seven wheat production and times five hiring speed will be times seven hearing speed hiring speed and this one gives you plus one percent to faith wheat wood and stone for every tile that you have on the current continent. So that works very well towards the end of the continent. And that is also one that I'm after. As for the final ones. You can adjust the ri the ritual duration. Uh, that's. And plus eight to. Rituals automation. I understand the point of that. Having the time. Of it will allow you to gain the. The bonuses for abdication. Much faster. But at the same time. I'm sort of. Not too bothered. About that. Um. And the Russian one here is you can buy tiles with faith, which is very similar to one of the divine trials, I believe. Forget which one. But yeah, like the first the first ones will cost a billion, and the next one will cost ten billion. So it's like a, an extra way to build up on tiles. So that is going to be very very neat. So. Really, I've got four empire points to spend here. I've got a choice between Egyptian and Russian. And I'm not quite sure. Tell you what. Mm. I got Egyptian. There, got it. Right. So, yeah, that's definitely the one I'm going to be wanting next. Plus the four empire points for plus 1% of each of those things. And there's still two more empires here I've not unlocked yet. So I don't know what they are or what bonuses they are going to give me and all of that. But here's the thing. Right. I feel like I've talked for ages. There is so much that I have gone through with this game. And there's so much to explain. And I feel like the game keeps on adding more and more layers. It turns out everything that I've done so far. This is just the first planet. Once you've max out all these abilities you can unlock space travel where you will do a whole bunch of new things in space and you will unlock mutations as they're called and then go to a new planet in which all this resets but you've got bonuses from these mutations so yeah uh half a year in and i'm still on the first planet i don't know how many planets you can go on to max out the entire game but for goodness sake this game, I love it. <laughs> I love it. And I definitely look forward to getting into space and seeing what it's like. Because there is a whole there is a whole thing about space where you've got your own like new board and everything. Right. So what I'm actually gonna do right now before I end this, because I've been going for quite a while, haven't I? Yeah, quite a long time. I'm just going to build loads of wheat fields and I'm going to abdicate. I'm going to demonstrate at this point in the game, what am I doing on a continent? Now, uh, by the way, the reason I've built my continent like wide like this is because it's, it's better to. It means you get easier access to these um these coastal tiles whereas if you build it like a square it becomes quite awkward to do that so this is what i've been doing right uh, I, I usually do it like one or two one of two ways wait hold on how many more right i need four more tiles 
Right, it's going to cost 45 billion to buy a new tile. So I usually, when I get to this point in a continent, I usually do one of two things. I'm either, hold on, let's get that to 20. So I've got gold, so I've got international trade there. I'm usually either going for gold, going for going for going for gold, or I am going for combat. If I'm going for gold, this is what I'll do. I'll buy, I'll get eight customs, right? Get one to 20, so that unlocks international trade, and then buy a ton of wood. And then spend all that wood on shipyards. Or Royal Dockyards, rather, because I've got that English upgrade. Right. With that increased intake, I will buy a bunch of stone. And I'll build a bunch of theatres here. Build eight theatres. Set my phone vibrating. I'll build one temple. And I'll build five cathedrals. And I will buy a load of wheat, buy a load of wood, and ritual, activate everything, put on maximum. I only want one of them. So yeah, that that ritual's going off there, so everything's getting, like, tons. Right, disable auto-hiring on my temple and my cathedral, so well, pyramid rather, and on the schools. And I'm going to make use of the goddess of nature. So pantheon. I want two pantheons. I want the legend of the forest, which increases wood. I'm not one wood per worker. I'm not bothered about that. But times 10 hiring speed. And I also want the guru's blessing, which doubles the effect of schools, which basically means these theatres. Bit of an error I've noticed. Uh, Theatre is spelt with an ER at the end on here. But... In the Empire Point screen, it's spelt R-E. So, an inconsistency, an inconsistency there. I mean, you know, it depends on the origin. It can, uh, it can change all that, but, you know, at least be consistent. Right, once that's run out, because you can't buy these resources during a, uh, during a ritual, buy a bunch more wooden wheat. See, it costs one million gold to do that, and I've got like three billion, so I'm not bothered. Right. Um, and I will choose the goddess of nature, and I'll just buy a load of these. See, because of the experts, these are so much cheaper, so yeah. Right, now, they cost 16 million. Let's activate that. And then when this goes to a couple billion, yeah, three billion, let's new life reset that. Yeah, so as you can see, like the, the hiring time is going up, but it takes such a high level for it to get to like a, a tiny fraction of a second. Right. Right. So yeah, these are costing like a couple tens of millions. And once that runs out, I'm going to get some more. And it's only because I've leveled up, well not leveled up, but I've hired all these experts that the like um the cultists as to why the religious perks are so cheap and the headhunters as to why they're going up so fast. Yep. Get some more wood for the shipyards, get some more wheat for my customs. Let's do that again. Right, it's back into the billions, so let's new life again. And as you can see, it's starting to slow down. Ooh, a tenth of a second now. Ooh. Yeah, it's properly slowed down now. Okay. Oh yeah, I've also sped up a little bit, haven't I, through this? 
plus two ritual power. Oh, times two. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. That's from the that that's from the um the goddess of nature adding all those bonuses, isn't it? Right. So now, well, apply to all those schools there, and now get some more wood and some more wheat, and. Activate it again, and now I'm getting loads more on those theatres there. But then this will all like really stack up. Also, when you abdicate, your gold intake will act as a multiplier for your abdication gold as well. As I should have mentioned. But yeah, once this minutes run out, and I'm going to do that, I'm going to abdicate, and then I'm going to get a ton of gold, several billion, and I'll be able to. Hold on, a tile cost forty-five billion. I can half it for two billion. So yeah, let's do that. So now, yeah, okay. And I'm gonna abdicate and get a ton of gold for it. Uh, how much? I need four more to sail away to the next continent. So. Okay. Uh, how am I doing? Abdicate for 23 billion gold. Let's do that. Right. So now I've got 23 billion gold. Uh, and now that means I can, if I want to, I can go, there's two ways I can go with that. I can spend it on, what do I want to spend that on? I mean, I could continue to have the hiring speed, uh, well, ha have the hiring time, I should say, to be able to get that a bit further, be able to get another tile, maybe. Let's, um, let's, yeah, right, okay, let's get another tile, let's, uh, where should I put it? I'll put it here. Right. Now, if I'm doing a combat, what I'll do is, if I'm going for combat, this is only like at the late stages of a of a continent. Of course, as always, I want to fill these up with dockyards. Now, I also, I really want to, um, I want to build two academies. Now, that's going to cost 100 billion and 10 million to do that. Uh, but I'm going to build quarries in schools, or theatres rather, to... be able to... Um, Get more. Is it school? One, two, three, four, five. And I'm also going to build a temple and four cathedrals or pyramids. And what is it I'm doing? Right, let's get a bunch of wheat. And let's. I want to do this because it'll make, because upgrading all these quarries and all these theatres are gonna make is gonna make getting stone a lot cheaper. You don't have to worry about building like wheat fields at this point because, you know, royal dockyards or shipyards or whatever you've got will produce a lot of wheat by themselves. Not quite as much wood and definitely not as much stone. But yeah, let's turn that off because I want to build two. Two of these and a forge. Actually, let's build one academy here. The first one for 10 million. And I am always a berserker. I always choose berserker. Right, and for the first level, I don't want 
I'm not going to use the, the god or anything. You get that one. Just going to level you up. I want to get to level like 10 or 11. I think it's level 11 where you get access to the axe that I've been using. Right. Get 100 billion stone. Academy. And you do the same. Just get whatever you can. And take over that tile there. You know, I might actually spend a bunch of amber and speed this up so I can show you get into a new continent. But, oh, I'm going to need another 50 billion to get the forge. Although I don't think there's going to be much use in it. Right, so I'm going to, see I've got this Axie 8 level 5. It costs more more fuel and more time in order to be able to do that so plus five damage after each kill let's burn a bunch of wood i need more wood to burn see if you're at the start of the game these numbers seem outrageous like you'll think like what you just throwing billions of wood oh i've been saving up ages for a farm that took ten thousand wood uh, that's probably not going to be much good but uh let's Pantheon, let's get God of War, I don't think it's really going to matter though, and uh, Guru's Blessing, I mean I, I could have got those before, it doesn't really matter though at this point, um, and get this, as you can see I'm going 20 per second, so I'm going to Spirits of War, I've got three of those, so the hero will be restored after being wounded once, the hero HP will equal to the hero's damage, so if you think about it, and then this gives you plus HP for every kill, and actually increases your base damage. If you think about it, right, this gives you plus 12 damage per kill. And I'm going to use this to give it 3 damage per kill, and then this to give it plus 2 damage per kill. And I'm going to do the same with this. So it's going to get a lot of, lot of extra damage per kill. Where is it? There. So see how much this this thing's uh, health, uh, strength is going up by, and three times it when it dies it will revive with health equal to whatever its strength is. So if I'm using this axe to power up its strength constantly, because of how much I've leveled it up, it's going to be an absolute powerhouse. Its strength is going to get into like hundred thousands. Then if it dies, it's going to come back with hundreds of thousands of health, and that can definitely last throughout the course of like ten thousand kills or whatever. But and yeah, you're the same there. And usually at this point, it's where you would wait. But I think I am going to spend some amber. Although I am saving my amber up, I think I am going to spend some to speed this process up. You know, I am going to put their auto attack on just in... I mean, it's not going to make any difference, but you know. Um... So yeah, that is just going up and up and up. So yeah, usually I'd leave it for however long it takes, but let's do a six hour time lapse with 22 amber. Ah, uh, you're nearly there. Let's, you've unlocked that one there, that's good. How much is it to buy the next tile? 12 billion. Oh, that's fair enough, I can get that. Do I even have to buy another surveyor? Right, I am going to get that. Right, okay. I have spent a bit of amber. Um, abdicate. Give me two billion gold. Right, okay. Not quite enough, but I only need one more tile to be able to. Yeah, because the amount of tiles and ships it requires you to be able to sail to another continent does reset after every time you... Um... Oh, let's zoom in a bit. It does reset after every time. You. Oh, 
reset I don't know what sentence I'm saying it does go up every time you tilt another continent so there is the question of like how many tiles do you want before you sail away and some would argue that you want to get as many as you can some would say just sail away as soon as you can I've started to adopt the sail away as soon as you can thing Right, get some pyramids. And okay, now let's cancel the automation of these ones. So what continent am I on? I'm currently on continent 14. And I want Legend of the Forest. And let's get the Chicken God. Not Chicken God. The Goddess of Nature. Do 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 do. And let's get the Guru's Blessing. Right, how much? Like, just, right, just two. Okay. Okay, and new life. So, yeah, it's going to take a few minutes to get this done. But I will eventually... Have enough. Let's let's in it. Let's re-enable these theatres. I am going to have a look after this to see how much gold I will get for abdication. Because I only need twelve, twelve point seven billion. And then I need to do that. Then I need to get some ships. But that's going to be so easy to do. Thirteen billion, great. Right. Buy tile, that one. Yeah, you can now sail away to another continent. Okay. Well, let's get this started. So yeah, this game does get quite absurd. And I'm not even I mean I mean, you know, this is still the first planet. There's still other planets to go to. You have to, in order to get to another planet, you've got to max out all your empire abilities. So I think that means you have to get a total of like four thousand five hundred tiles. And let's I mean not that I particularly need to get I mean maybe I do I don't know stuff that give me more wood right aha there we are right sail away right sail away to a new continent you will start on a new continent with four tiles like at the beginning of the game gold will be reset hide specials will also be reset heritage and heroes training will be reset progress until the next empire point will remain and the empire bonus point and the empire points themselves empire bonuses will remain amber and relics will remain and it'll be possible to upgrade my relics level 15 which i'm not going to do and i will receive 38 fame boom right as you can see my fame has gone up there right so this is the start of a new continent and with all these bonuses i've got three wheat sail wheat, wheat fields an aqueduct uh, i can't afford everything so i'll just leave out that one and then uh, they'll produce 
a ton of stuff. Oh, let's have a look, actually. Yeah, see? Uh, times 7 wheat fields, wheat production, times 7 wood stone production, and times 7 to hiring speed. Right, let's disable these ones because I want to get some more on the aqueduct there. Because this aqueduct is free from, where is it, uh, the second Roman's ability there. It means this first abdication is going to give me so much gold. I mean, this when you think about, like, the first continent, when you first play in this game... And now I'm on like continent 15. The production is so much better. I mean, look at this. Right. Look at all that gold I've got. Buy, tile, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So instantly I'm on 10 tiles, which means I can get gold production from. This shouldn't unlock international trade, which I can't really make use of. Buy a bunch of wheat fields. Buy a farm. Let's, cause I, I need uh, to buy another to buy another aqueduct. I need more. Let's rush out some wood. So yeah, this is totally not representative of the start of the game on the first continent because you'll go a lot slower. But yeah, I don't think there's much else for me to say. Other than, whoa, what? Okay. <laughs> well, that went a bit weird. Uh, yeah, let's just power this up a bit. Uh, disable you. But yeah, I'm getting so much. I mean, look at all that wood I'm getting. And I only need one more tile to unlock another empire point. Because that's the thing, like at the start, when at the start of the continent, you're unlocking all these tiles. You're working towards those empire points a lot faster. Only thing is, is that I'm not entirely sure what I do want to get next. I am thinking I would want to go for this one, which is what I was going for originally. And I need eight more. No, I don't need eight more. I need a lot more than eight more. I was read that wrong. I was thinking about the next empire. It's going to take a long time to see whatever that is. But it's going to be interesting to see whatever that is. Um, but I do believe that there's no one on YouTube who is as far as me in this game. I've not seen any video. I, I mean, I've seen one. There's one like there's like a Russian guy who has got has done quite a few continents, but still not not as far as this. But yeah, these early stages. Uh, a bit of a pain, because as you can see there, it's now costing me 2 million gold. I am going to have to start investing in combat. So, uh, let's... Um, so, I want to get two quarries here. I need 30,000 to get to a quarry. And this is definitely a lot faster th than, you know, the like, I mean, even despite the fact that, you know, I am saying, like, oh, I need that. that yes, yeah, so it gives you these tutorials again. It resets, like, what tutorials you've seen and all that. Anyway, have I been going on over an hour? I definitely have. Right, okay, that's it. I'm going to end this video here. Um, Am I? Yeah, I will. I'm going to end this video here. But I'm currently working towards getting a hero on this tile so I can start taking over tiles through combat. And I'm going to use the bow that I have unlocked with the first English ability. Because that is good for the start of the game. Right. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time.